Alright, I grab it here. Something a little bit more different this time. Um, I suggest that if you're really interested in this episode that you also watch my previous video where I actually set up um, a virtual Omega 500 and then I installed um, Amos Professional and the and compiler uh, 2.0. So that's kind of the baseline for, um, for this video. So you can um, get the whole source package from this um, GitHub page and I'll put it in the comments. <coughs> and um, I suggest the one um, <coughs> uses the um, uh, download as a zip file. There have been some weird instances that when one uses like other methods, then um, you can get corrupted files. So the most reliable way to get the file, the complete file set, the, the initial complete file set, in my opinion, is to take it as the zip file. And then you just unzip the zip file. And then what I've done is I've added this. If you've can um, done the setup in the previous video, then um, I've added uh, the root directory of this um, uh, file set as the as a second hard drive as DH1. Um, this in turn this um, this source um, has been kind of inherited from here. So this is where the, the source code comes from. And um, what I can kind of figure out is the source code is uh, from around uh, 1993, something like that. Um, there are projects out there that have been uh, kind of trying to do updates to, um, to the system. And, uh, for example, here's one. And uh, basically this, this one <laughs> gave, gave up because they found out that it's too OS dependent, uh, the whole subsystem. <laughs> um, but the, the one that's actually come the most long, but it also niche pretty much focused still on uh, Amiga as the platform, even though they, you can compile parts of it. And, and um, presumably also um, run parts of it on, on, on Linux and Windows. So this is this kid, and so what they've done is that they've um, gone for a complete code conversion approach. But as I understand, they haven't implemented all the graphics and stuff. So, so I don't know. And, and then this has been um, languishing a bit also, so that's many years. But I mean, I'm going to focus on the absolute vanilla original source code. And, and um, the question that was on actually on the original side uh, from the person that set this up. Um, the question was that Tom um, can he doesn't remember how how the build process actually worked. So that's what I'm going to cover. And just as a side comment, the, the source code has been put under a, an a MIT type license, so it's um, it's publicly, you, you can do whatever you want with the source code, so it's, it's no longer a commercial product. So, um, once you've downloaded the source code and you've extracted it, or all the files in the GitHub project, then um, I actually when I did some analysis, so you actually have this um, uh, top level folder structure and um, the directory Amos is for the runtime files so after it's been compiled and, and you're going to distribute it. Then I uh, had a look at this one here, Amo Amos sources and this is where it gets confusing because in the root you have sources and then you suddenly have a directory called Amos Pro sources. So um, uh, no, we can just take this one here. Uh, I, I, I've made a separate analysis of that, and I'll be talking about it in a, in a, in a separate video. But you don't need this, um, any any of the the uh, files in that folder, um, to be able to build the system. So, yeah, yeah. 
we'll get back to that later. So you can actually delete, the, you can, if it's easier, you can just delete the, um, delete that folder. And, um, then you have the bin folder. Uh, it's got some uh, binary files in it. I don't seem to be that critical right now. Um, and then in the C folder, it's not C. <laughs> But in there you have um, cust the custom build tools that are used in the system, and then the, the Highsoft uh, compilers. The, it uses Highsoft assemblers to um, compile the code, and of course one can question, um, is it legal to have... Um, I, I'm not aware that Highsoft has released uh, their products as in the public domain, so I don't know if it's strictly speaking legal to have their... Um, binary compilers uh, actually in uploaded in GitHub, but they're included in the package. So. Uh, and then um, in the compiler directory you have the compiler source and the build scripts for that, and in the extensions you have the extension source and build scripts for that, and includes are the uh, mainly for the, well I would say actually pretty much the Amiga OS. Uh, lib library includes the normal stuff. If if you've done any kind, of, even if you watch some of my videos, then you will, you will recognize that these are just um, standard. So they've actually included the Amiga include file. So so basically, it's a uh, uh, the whole download is an atomic package. You don't need to go get anything else from anywhere else. Um. And as I mentioned about the compilers, so it actually uses um, two different compilers. And basically it's a version um, difference, so there's an older older version of the Highsoft compiler and then a little bit newer version of the Highsoft compiler. So different parts of the system are compiled with different um, versions. And then um, they've created some in-house tools actually using Amos Basic. It's compiled Amos basic code, so they use their own tool to create build tools to build the system, or help build the system. <laughs> so you have, um, and these are in the C directory, so you have check clib, check valid of compile, uh, compiler, uh, clibs, uh, get chunk, this is um, Amiga's methodology of, of uh, dividing binaries up into different chunks and then what you can do is you can do tricks like you can you, you can get uh, you can go into one binary and extract a specific chunk and then you can like add it to another binary or replace replace a chunk in another binary. Um, and then library digest analyze source and report sizes and labels you know, and then you have the utilities make labels that actually create a table of labels for the Amos Pro 2.0 and then making a token table also utility. So those are a few of the um, and um, ah <laughs> just to be clear all, all these tools only run on an Amiga so you, you can't run it. This, this, the build environment and such it requires that you run it on an Amiga. Um, again coming back into uh, Every Amiga setup um, has certain assigned mappings, and, and, and basically they're divided up into different categories. And, and if you have any of them wrong, then, then stuff won't work and it won't find it. It'll say file not found or device not found or whatever. So basically, the, the, I, d I decided to list everything that's available in the, in the system setup uh, that I have, uh, from, that I use to compile. So you can actually go in and validate yourself. So, so it has these volumes defined and mounted, and then it has these directory definitions. So these are basically shortcuts. So uh, directory C is Workbench 2.1 C. So uh, if you're familiar with the Amiga assign method uh, mythology, then this makes total sense. And then there's a bunch of directory uh, assignments which are created when you actually run. Amos Pro. So, 
I suggest that you run Amos Pro at least once before you try and compile. And then uh, I just listed what devices were uh, visible in the system when, um, when I did the compile. Uh, I yeah, put a comment there. The, the way I did this is that I um, I ran this manually, so I didn't just like uh, main script, which is actually this this one here, a all. I didn't just take a all and I run it and see what happens. So what I did is I actually um, disabled um, and enabled one part at a time. So this so this report list is based on a manual sequential execution of the uh, compiler. So I just think I'd just kind of just like scroll through this and just show what the sequence looks like, <coughs> and then um, I'd just like to show a few, um, just compile a few of the components uh, live on the, on the system. But I mean, I won't run everything. It just takes too long, and it's like watching paint dry. So I don't think there's much joy in that. But uh, um, so anyway, the the main top level script is um, a all. And then it can it base it executes sub scripts that um, does the actual building processes processes and um, then after it's done all that uh, then it actually runs a few tests and um, then it's finished and. Um, so let's have a look at, and I'll d take the first ones in a bit more detail and then we'll just scroll through the rest, but I mean, it, um, so here you see it executes this talk table, which is uh, the, uh, the custom AMOS compiled uh, custom tool. And then it processes a file uh, to get the token list in binary format. And most of it is actually like they have some echo comments, you know, like here's a making token table, talk to to where, where bin, and then making label file. And here it runs the custom tool labels, so it starts off with that. And here's the first, um, uh, yeah, assembler run that it actually makes, and that's to take this plus lib dot s, and then directly produce the Amos Pro dot lib. So that's quite impressive. So that's a key file in the Amos system. <laughs> so the first first thing it compiles is the Amos lib. Amos Pro lib. Um, the naming syntax they've used in the root folder, which is the only folder to you know uh, and the subsequent subfolders except for the one that I excluded. Th they follow uh, quite a strict rule that um, the, the plus xx dot s those files always contain a uh, source code assembler and then the, if it doesn't have a plus then it's a script file uh, but if you if you go into the uh, amos sources uh, I shouldn't talk about it, but I'll, I'll just mention if you go into amos sources subdirectory then this logic falls apart there's no mean so I, I consider that as I said, I'll come back to it, but not, not recommending digging into that at this stage. So if you stick with this, uh, the root folder and the other subfolders, and this execution procedure, then, then everything works out fine. And um, so, yeah, this was the Amos Pro lib, and then it does the Amos library, and it uses a different assembler, as we see, and um, then it also installs the library. And here you see those assignments uh, starting to work because it actually uses the address libs and then it, uh, the file name. Uh, and then it actually does the Amos Pro itself. <sighs> General loader. And then. Um, and then it creates a bunch of uh, all the configuration data is um, it's um, binary files. 
like sort of uh, yeah in an acceptance to other other more modern approaches to, but it's all 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 binary um, okay so I fixed it for the formatting and draw it out so I mean and then here it's actually doing this trick that I said that it's got this tool get chunk where it actually um, uh, it takes a chunk of stuff and then it throws it into another file. So that's the way it does that. And then here it's doing some copying work. So it's like installing it for testing and, and or real use. At the same time it's compiling the stuff. So that's not a, sometimes we're not really used to that. You know, we, 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 in more modern context, you the building process is separated from the actual deployed for test or deployed for installation. But, but in this case, it's all it's all bundled up. As soon as it's compiled stuff, then throws it out for testing or throws it out for um, for actual use. And then you get the editor, uh, the monitor. And then it goes into extensions. Uh, almost uh, uses a extension system so that you can actually build onto the system, and then you 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 actually have those separate, and then they're compiled and then added to the system. So here you have in the in the extensions directory, it actually builds builds those, uh, and then it makes some library, a music. Um, yeah, it makes a library digest to that. Um, compiles it and also like sticks it in a library like directly deploying <laughs> for testing now these deletes that it has these are I think that they they kind of decided that they uh, they're generated but they're not needed all the time so they, they they basically decided to add this to the scripts that it delete deletes the labels information and the size information Presumably they found out, or we, we know, uh, done it a million times, we know exactly what we've... Because uh, this, by the time this source code was pushed out the door, uh, in terms of this GitHub, now I think it was pretty much stabilized. Um, yeah, it was the end of life product. Uh, and then you have the um, compactor, uh, the requester, IO library and then the compiler and here you see the interesting the Amos Pro compiler so it has its own own subfolder and all the execution and then it goes into these subscripts and I actually just continue with this report so I can see that everything is working and as I said that I manually ran this every single command you know, so I didn't just run the scripts and missed a bunch of stuff so I actually did it one by one to actually make sure that it, that it seems to work and as I said that I, I'd opted not to run the delete options just because I'm the first time ever doing this I don't really know what those files are maybe I'll need to look at something maybe it'll be interesting so then I decided I wouldn't do the delete uh, compact header tools uh, yeah and um, the tools section here, that's the test. <laughs> so, so at the, the very end of the whole building process, it rebuilds all the tools that it's used to build the system or to help build the system. So as you see here, we have this um, check C, lab, check ch get chunk, library digest, make label. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, inter <laughs> interesting. <laughs> I'm not, uh, not really used to that, that you, you, you have build tools to build the system and then you rebuild those tools at the end and you don't really check them You're like there's no validation logic that <laughs> checks if these tools continuously are, are working anymore it's, it just compiles them and so that, that's good enough <laughs> if, it com if it compiles it works <laughs> okay. nah, they, I mean of course they, they knew what they were doing so It's a bit of a bit of a joke that you know. If it compiles, we'll ship it. <laughs> uh, 
No. And then it takes away a bunch of info files that are, that are not needed. Um, and as I said, I uh, had my setup from the previous video, downloaded the GitHub, found out I could, I could ignore the Amos sources director that had no meaning to the whole process. Uh, and then I was able to like run, even if I just ran it manually, putting the commands in. I uh, looking at the script files and then putting in the command, I was able to run everything without, uh, and as I said, I, I, I stress here, executes without visible errors. So, yeah. That, I mean, whether the binary product uh, in, in all its glory is, um, is completely sane, uh, I, w I am, I was able, and am I, am able to run the binaries uh, as they have been produced, so, but, but I mean, I'm, I'm not a specialist in, um, in, in testing Amos Pro, so I don't have a test suit to run in through Amos Pro and see if it, if, if everything, if, if nothing's broken, so. But at least the, the, the main stuff works, I mean, the, the UI starts and the compiler compiles and, uh, so I, I didn't, um, yeah, barring extensive in-depth testing, I, I didn't notice anything that was screwed up. So the answer to the question, can it be compiled uh, on its original uh, development platform? Yeah, yeah, it can. It seems to be um, quite possible. Anyway, so you don't think that I'm just um, talking crap, then I think what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll run a couple of compiles here just for the fun of it. On the, uh, on the platform and just to show that things actually do get compiled. So anyway, uh, let's just pick, or you take one of the custom tools, see, make, talk table. And um, see that it actually works. So this yeah, basically it runs through a file and it's it's extracting those numbers that are on the right hand side there and putting them into a binary file. And um, since we're running it on a stock Omega 500, it um, takes a while so we <laughs> understand why I don't want to demonstrate the full build because <laughs> nobody would be <laughs> nobody would be in the video after a while <laughs> just watching this kind of stuff robot. But anyway, I, I really wanted to show uh, live online um, at least a few of the um, steps of the build process just to show that it actually actually does work. So anyway, this is an, a, a compiled Amos um, basic application which they use themselves to, um, to to create a binary token list. See the, the development in those days wasn't it was such a fast process, <laughs> and um, I, I created a um, just for the fun of it. I created a okay. I, I created a Python three version of this, and and boy, <laughs> it's, a, it's so much faster when I'm running it on my own. But anyway, the, you can see that you're on an Omega 500 and natively running one of their custom tools. Uh, seems to work fine. No, no errors. As I said, no visible errors. So um, let's see if I can pick something else to look at. So let's take another example. Let's um, use the Genium 2 assembler to assemble the Amos library. This works. And I mean, they all they, they all work the same way. So, but I just thought I'd want to take a snapshot. Of, you know, one example of using a custom tool, and one example of using a um, high high soft 
assembler. I mean, just to show that it actually does work. <laughs> and again, it's not as <laughs> fast as we're used to. I mean, th this amount, this amount of code on a modern machine, it would just be a, a matter of seconds to to have this compiled. Oh, <laughs> compile the whole system in a matter of a minute under a minute I think. but not, not on a stock Amiga 500 ah, you, 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 you could cheat you could um, uh, you know, let the emulator run at ridiculous speeds and stuff so anyway zero errors found was this one of the yeah as you see the okay, the stupid comparison but the the, the the number of lines uh, ends up being more in bytes. <laughs> oh, I think it expands the, the amount of data being generated when it's compiled. But anyway, that um, yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, you know, for those very small fraction of persons that are interested in it. Oh, this was a kind of a de uh, yeah. brief demonstration of that you can still compile stuff on its original platform from 30 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Ah, but I had fun um, taking taking the challenge and just um, having that. I know it wasn't actually, actually I, I, I must admit that it, it it, it was no challenge. There, there, there was there was nothing I needed to fix or adjust. It was just to, yeah, uh, as I said, mythology. I, I ran it like one one command line at a time just to make sure that everything's really working. But I mean, basically, I wouldn't have needed to do that. I could have probably taken the AOLA from the beginning and just run the whole thing. And. Um, if I remember, I didn't reboot the system in between when I was actually doing the manual process. I mean, in Ar Amiga, it's from that generation where you, you you can very easily end up with like, oh, my memory's lost and now I can't do anything. So, but that 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 didn't happen either. So, so I think I actually ran it in one. I was able to continue working from start to finish with one. One Amiga 500 uh, live session. Um, not, not not always the case. I mean, in, in when you're dealing with this old older equipment, then it's it's not totally not abnormal that you find that oh wow, you have to restart for one reason or not. I mean, you can have things disappear suddenly, like workbench dies or whatever. <laughs> those, those were the days. But anyway. For those, as I said, for the, those that are interested, I hope this was informative and um, gives you confidence that um, yeah, the code still can be compiled. Well, see you in the next one.